so to speak, for an excellent presentation. Um, I was very impressed and I'm uh, very much looking forward actually to doing the test. It's also very much related to a lot of uh, our activities. Um, furthermore, I was also very impressed by the X, by Lowens, and by Wolfgang. Uh, it's a very interesting act and very nice way of uh, opening this uh, conference. I must say that I uh, didn't have the chance this, uh, um, or last evening actually to, uh, to, uh, well, to practice my speech or presentation in the airplane because there was nobody sitting next to me. <laughs> so you're my first audience of this presentation, um, which will be about fiscal activity recommendations in the policies in the European region. Uh, let me also take the opportunity to uh, say thanks to the organizers of the MOVE 2010 and the different partners that have been involved in the organization of this conference. Um, I'm very delighted that we've been invited um, as the DHL Regional Office for Europe to say something about our work in the field of fiscal activity promotion. Uh, my name is Lee Vanille and I work as a technical officer in the Nutrition, Physical Activity and Obesity program in Copenhagen. Um, and I hope to contribute to this day uh, by giving you uh, a short introduction to our new recommendations on physical activity for health. And also by giving you some insights on our policy related work in the European region. Um, well, I basically have uh, two main aims for this uh, session. I think it will take me around 25 minutes. First of all, I want to give you a short uh, recommendation or a short introduction to our global uh, recommendations on fiscal activity for health. And my second part uh, of this presentation will focus on our policy framework for action. And I will also try to give you an overview of the current state of affairs regarding uh, national fiscal activity policies in the European region. Before I um, go on with that, I will give you a short summary on the fiscal activity situation that we face in the European region. Well, on this slide you see a few numbers that I extracted from the Global Health Risk Report. The survey that was the basis for this report shows us that fiscal inactivity is currently the fourth leading risk factor in global mortality. And this survey also estimated for the European region that there are around 1 million deaths per year that are related to fiscal inactivity. Then on this slide, a few uh, numbers that I um, extracted from two Eurobarometer studies and the health behavior in school aged children study. Um, the Eurobarometer study on health and food uh, tells us that around 40% of the adults does not engage in any moderate uh, physical activity in a typical week. And then for children, the HBSC study uh, tells us that 22% of the 11-year-old girls and 30% of the boys uh, reports at least uh, one hour of the daily moderate to uh, vigorous physical activity. Um, I also looked into the more recent Eurobarometer on sport and health, and this Eurobarometer uh, shows us from the European uh, Union that 65% of its uh, citizens get some form of physical exercise at least once a week, but it also tells us that 34% of these citizens uh, report that they seldom or never get any physical exercise during the week. So that was just a few numbers to set the scene for the European region. Um, I will now uh, tell you something about uh, the WHO global recommendations on physical activity for health. Um, as some of you uh, might know, we recently launched uh, these recommendations um, in June 2010. And they are actually the first official set of WHO recommendations for physical activity for health. Before we were working with the ACSM and um, American Heart Association uh, recommendations, but these are the, the first official WHO set of recommendations. And they built very strongly uh, on the work that was carried out uh, by the US Department of Health and Human Services for the development of the American Physical Activity uh, Guidelines. So why have these recommendations uh, on physical activity for health been issued? Um, well, first of all, because of the public health significance of active living, of 
course, there are many health be benefits related to active living, and I think that makes very evident uh, the need of uh, such recommendations. Another good argument uh, for having these recommendations is that uh, they give member states and countries an evident starting point to ad advocate for physical activity promotion and to start uh, working on different interventions, policies and actions in the field of physical activity promotion. Uh, in addition to that, they've also been uh, developed in response to the limited existence of uh, national guidelines and recommendations in low and middle income countries. And I think this set of recommendations uh, can be a very good guidance for countries which have not uh, established much interventions or actions on physical activity promotion yet. Um, well, the main aim of the recommendations is uh, basically to provide guidance mainly to national and local uh, policy makers on the dose-response relation between the frequency, the duration, the type and the total amount of physical activity which is needed for the prevention of non-communicable diseases. Uh, the recommendations are population-based and they uh, include three different age groups. Um, the first one um, focuses on children and youth. Then, of course, we have recommendations for adults and also for older adults. And as you can see from the um, workflow figure here in the middle of this slide, drafting recommendations is not an easy process because we started with um, these recommendations in 2008. And now, uh, after a lot of consultations with experts and a lot of reviewing by different institutions, um, we finally launched this official set in uh, 2010, this summer. Um, this slide I basically inserted, inserted to illustrate um, that the global recommendations uh, include guidance on the intensity of activity, on the different domains in which the activity can be performed, uh, on the type of activity, and they say something about how often, how long and how much activity is needed in total to enhance health. Well, that brings me to uh, the recommendations um, for children and youth. Um, the WHO recommends um, for children at least 60 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous physical activity. The recommendations also say that more than 60 minutes uh, per day provide additional health benefits. And most of this physical activity should be aerobic um, in these physical activity. Uh, vigorous intensity activities should be incorporated and they should also incorporate, incorporate um, strengthening and bone uh, muscle exercises uh, at least three times per week. While well, physical activity um, for children can include play, it can include games, sport, um, it can include transportation, so biking, walking, um, it can include rec recreation activities, um, activities uh, done during physical education, or activities uh, done during planned exercise. And most of these activities uh, normally take place in the context of family, the school, or uh, community activities. That brings me to the recommendations for adults. Um, currently, the World Health Organization recommends for adults at least 150 minutes of moderate physical activity spread throughout the week, or at least uh, 75, 75 minutes of vigorous physical activity spread throughout the week, or an equal combination of those two. Uh, the physical activity uh, should be done in bouts of at least 10 minutes per time. Um, there are also a few uh, additional recommendations for, um, for extra health benefits. For uh, additional health benefits, the WHO recommends to increase the moderate physical activity to uh, 300 minutes per day, per, per day of course, um, or to engage in 150 minutes of vigorous physical activity per week, or again, an equal combination of those two and also for additional health benefits, uh, muscle strengthening activities on two or more days per week are recommended. <coughs> well, to uh, make your life easy and also my life easy, uh, the main recommendations for older 
adults are actually the same as the ones that I've just presented uh, for adults. Uh, but besides those four recommendations for adults and elderly, uh, there are also a few specific recommendations uh, for older adults. Um, well, in addition, in addition to these main recommendations, older adults and especially those with uh, poor mobility should perform physical activities that enhance balance or that help preventing falls on three or more days uh, per week. Um, in addition, older adults are also recommended to do the muscle strengthening activities on two or more days per week. And um, if older adults are not able to reach those recommendations, they are uh, recommended to be as physically active as their abilities and condition allow. So what types of activities are recommended for adults and older adults? Um, well, the main settings to perform physical activity for these groups uh, are the rec recreational setting, the leisure time setting, um, the transportation uh, setting, <coughs> and of course, the thing of walking and cycling, the work setting, and uh, the, the household setting. Uh, concrete examples for um, adults and elderly are daily walking, cycling, using the stairs, doing uh, garden or home jobs, uh, swimming, playing games, but also they can be involved in, in sports, of course, and planned exercise. And um, the activity activities are mainly done or should be done, of course, in, um, in the family or community uh, context uh, on a daily basis. So how can these recommendations be used or how can they, put, uh, how can they be put into practice? Um, I think that these recommendations can be seen as a good evidence-based starting point for national policy makers that want to uh, work with the promotion of physical activity. Um, they can fur furthermore be used by all the relevant stakeholders to uh, communicate a valid and also consistent mes message. Um, I think that these recommendations can also serve as a very good tool for health professionals to inform patients on the daily amount of physical activity. Um, they can furthermore also be used as a benchmark for public health monitoring and for different surveillance purposes. And uh, they can obviously be used to develop uh, physical activity policies. Well, um, for us, of course, it's very important that we have these recommendations disseminated as wide as possible. Uh, and I know that events like this are, are very good opportunities to present them and to um, to disseminate them. So hopefully um, you will take them home and you can learn from it or put them into practice in your own work or communicate them or discuss them with your, your partners in different networks. So this, uh, this is the first part of uh, my presentation. Um, in the second part, I will give you an overview of the current state of affairs regarding physical activity promotion policies in the European region. Uh, by telling you something about our policy framework for action uh, and then zooming in on an overview that we've been preparing on national fiscal activity policies in the European region. Well, the documents that you see on this slide basically form our mandate for action. Uh, the one that you see to the far left is the global strategy on uh, diet, fiscal activity and health. I think all of you are familiar with this document. This is basically a, a global framework to promote healthier diets and physical activity. And this global framework is also um, one of our key or leading documents for, the, for our work in the European region. Uh, then in the middle you see the European, European Charter on Counteracting Obesity. 